Today in my driveway, I have two alternative fueled vehicles, but they're two very, very different cars. On this side, we have the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. This is definitely trying its best to be an imitation Tesla, and Ford has done an excellent job about making a world-class EV. This has a huge battery, nearly 100 kilowatt hours, real-world range of around 300 miles. And then over here on this side, we have the alternative to electric vehicles, at least in California, Hawaii, Canada, Europe, South, uh, South Korea and Japan, we have the new 2021 Toyota Mirai. This is the first rear wheel drive hydrogen fuel cell vehicle that you can buy. And interestingly enough, a lot of people don't realize this, both of these are electric cars. It's just that this is getting its electricity a different way. It stores about 11 pounds of hydrogen on board, and then it converts that to electricity via the fuel cell up front. But in an odd sort of way, as sexy as this new Mirai is, it is way better looking than the old Mirai, this particular format of hydrogen fuel cell vehicle doesn't actually make that much sense to me. And that's why there's gonna be a different video coming out where I take a look at this Mirai versus the Hyundai Nexo, which does make an awful lot of sense. But let's take a deeper dive into these vehicles. Obviously up front, the design is very, very different. This Ford Mustang Mach-E is trying to be both a Mustang and a crossover, which seems really weird. And it's trying to be the same sort of crossover that we see in the Tesla lineup, where it's really shaped in terms of its profile like a Prius. That's all down to the aerodynamics. Aerodynamics are incredibly important for an electric vehicle or really any high efficiency vehicle, but especially important for an electric vehicle like this over a fuel cell vehicle like the Mirai because there's less energy on board. And that's why we don't have door handles on here. There's a lot more focus on the aerodynamics of the front active grill shutters, things like that. And if we move over here to the Mirai, you'll notice this is much more traditionally styled. This looks an awful lot like the rest of the Toyota sedan lineup. Although honestly, I think this is the best looking Toyota sedan that they make right now. I really wish that they would turn this into like a, a hybrid Avalon or something like that in the future. Full LED headlights up front, but less of a focus on aerodynamics generally in this design. You'll also notice that when we move on over to the side of the Ford Mustang. As with other EVs, Ford decided on very aerodynamic door handles. We have these really odd ones up front. These sort of look like a, a tiny little finger that the car is presenting you. You press this button to open the door and then you pull on this little handle and open the door. Things get a little bit weirder for the back door though. We press on the same button and then there's no handle. And that's because it would no longer be in the aerodynamic lee of the side view mirror. So now we have to just grab on the painted section of the door. That strikes me a little bit funny. Ford claims that kids do that naturally with doors anyway, but I find that just a little bit odd. I wish it had at least a tiny little handle there. Although Ford is calling this a crossover, you can see that the profile definitely has this teardrop shape thing going on. It's a very practical, efficient shape as far as cargo practicality versus the aerodynamic efficiency for the vehicle. That's why the Prius is also shaped that way. Over here on the Mirai, aerodynamics are again a little bit less important. So we find regular old door handles that move exactly as you'd expect a door handle to move. And that's because there's simply more energy on board. We see the exact same decisions going on in high efficiency gasoline vehicles. It's cheaper to do door handles this way because that's the way other door handles are. And if you have more energy on board, it becomes a little bit less important as far as aerodynamics go. We have a pretty traditional sedan shape here, generally speaking, until we get to this part right here where all of a sudden we have something that looks a bit more like a sport back, but in fact, we have a regular old trunk back here. And that's because the Mirai is based on the LS500 sedan. Basically what Toyota did was they took the LS500, they deleted about a foot off the vehicle, shortened the trunk up a little bit, stuck a Toyota logo on the front. The connection with the LS500 makes a lot of sense because the LS platform also used in the Lexus LC was designed for a big V8 engine to sit under the hood. And the fuel cell occupies a lot of space. This fuel cell is significantly smaller than the old one. This is about 50% smaller and it is now entirely under the hood. That may seem like a weird statement, but the previous generation Mirai fuel cell occupied not only the under the hood component, but also under the dashboard, under the front seats. It was a really big fuel cell. The other fuel cells that we see out there on the market in the Clarity and in the Nexo are definitely smaller, but this is now the smallest and the most energy dense in the world. This produces 128 kilowatts, about 20, 30% more than we find in the next highest, which is the Hyundai Nexo. And the Nexo's fuel cell occupies a bit more space. Now under this hood, we don't find really anything other than a storage area where you can keep your charge connectors and your adapters. And that is one reality with electric vehicles that I find maybe I'm just extra cautious, but I like to have adapters with me. So I like to have somewhere to put them. That is right here under the hood. I also have a Tesla tap so you can plug into those Tesla destination chargers. Um, we should talk about charging a little bit here too. Charging in this 
Ford Mustang Mach-E could take up to 100 hours if you have only access to a level one charge cord, which unfortunately is exactly what I have access to out here because I live off the grid. And you'll notice it is now foggy and that means that I cannot charge this because no sun means no power. And uh, this battery is right around 20%. That's why this Ford Mustang is off and the Mirai is on keeping its cabin nice and toasty for later in this video. Now let's talk about range. In the Mirai, the EPA range is just over 400 miles. It's absolutely huge. It's the longest range alternative fueled vehicle in North America right now. In real world driving, you can get 400 miles out of the Mirai because in fuel cell vehicles, the range drop is very gasoline normal. So as long as you're not flooring it around everywhere, the range is just fine, including mountain passes, highway journeys, higher speeds, colder temperatures, etc. Over here in the Mustang Mach-E, range is still impressive for an electric vehicle. This is EPA rated for 270 miles. I have definitely been able to get 290 miles out of it without even trying. Getting 300, however, that could be a little bit tricky. So any way you slice it, the Mirai is going to go at least 100 miles further. But there's another thing you should keep in mind. If it's hot outside, the range in both vehicles is going to drop because the air conditioning has to be used. If it's cold outside, the range is also going to drop because both of these vehicles need to use electric heater elements to heat the cabin. However, it's going to drop an awful lot faster in the Ford because not only does this have to heat the cabin, it has to heat the battery. And over here in the Mirai, you don't have to heat the hydrogen tank. You don't have to heat the fuel cell in that same way. So cold weather range drop is much, much better in the Mirai than it is in the Mustang. But again, oddly, this Mirai, even though it is absolutely sexy, is probably the worst poster child for hydrogen because I think, at least personally for me, in my opinion, that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles make the most sense in SUVs, pickup trucks, larger vehicles, not slinky, sexy sedans like this Mirai because there are a lot of compromises. Let's take a look at the trunk. You'll notice that if I lift open this trunk lid, we have just under 10 cubic feet of cargo space. There's not a lot of room back here. We also don't have folding rear seats. And if I lift up this cargo load floor, we don't find a spare tire. We just find a few tools in there. And then things get worse on the inside. Theoretically, you could make a hydrogen tank that was square, but in reality, they're cylindrical for cost reasons and safety reasons. And they're located in areas of the vehicle that hopefully you don't need, like this tunnel right here, because it's a rear wheel drive platform. It was designed for a tunnel for a drive shaft to go to the rear of this vehicle doesn't need one. So they put a hydrogen tank there. Unfortunately, it's pretty big. And it means that this fifth seat belt that the vehicle now has is not overly useful. In addition, the sexy roof line and the position of this middle seat means that it's really unusable for anybody that is my size. Now, in my mind, that wouldn't be a problem for the Mirai if it was fast and fun to drive. It's certainly fun to drive, but it's not exactly fast. This is the fastest hydrogen fuel cell vehicle that's been made so far. It goes zero to 60 under seven and a half seconds. But the Mustang Mach-E is one of the new breed of electric vehicles, where electric vehicle manufacturers realized that they could make electric vehicles quick, fun to drive, etc., and so they did in order to help sell more. This produces 346 horsepower, 428 pound-feet of torque, and the Mirai over here is about 182 horsepower. It is lighter than the Mustang Mach-E, and you will certainly notice that, and it has a perfect 50-50 weight balance. It's rear wheel drive. It is a ton of fun to drive, as long as you don't want to drive it terribly quickly. And even though, to be perfectly honest for me, the speed of this is just fine. It's faster than the Nexo that I have on lease right now. It is a ton of fun to drive. It's a gorgeous looking vehicle. It's just not overly practical and it lacks that wow factor that we find, honestly, in the big EV player in the United States, Tesla. It's really difficult to talk about any alternative fueled vehicles without talking about big T. And that is certainly a factor when it comes to hydrogen fuel cell vehicles because Elon and Tesla have been very, very against fuel cells for a while. But again, they make sense just not entirely clear that they make sense in this. Now that said, there's still a lot of advantages to the Mirai. The first one obviously is quick refilling. It takes only about five minutes to refuel the Mirai. You simply pop open this little door here after I have turned off the vehicle, turn it off there, hit the fuel button, fuel door pops open, and then we come in and we simply connect the hydrogen filler right there. Five minutes later, the vehicle is completely full and you can go another 400 miles. Things are a little bit different with battery electric vehicles. Yes, the Ford Mustang Mach-E can charge from 10% to 80% in 47 minutes. But if you want to go from 10% to 100%, it could take nearly three hours because after the 80% mark, charging drastically slows down in the Mach-E. There are a number of EVs out there that will charge considerably faster than that after 80%, but any way you slice it, most EVs from 10% to 100% are gonna take minimum of an hour to an hour and a half. 
Now let's do some road trip math. Obviously this road trip would have to be entirely in the state of California because that's the only place that there are hydrogen stations. But if you could do a road trip beyond that, you'd start at 100% hydrogen tank full. You'd get 400 miles of range. Say you wanted to keep it safe, only drive down to about a 10% of your tank left. Stop at the hydrogen station, fill up. That fill up gives you 360 miles of range in five minutes. Over here in the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the target for the battery should be between 10% and 80% in those DC fast charge sessions. Say you start at 100% battery, you could drive not quite as far as the Mirai, but you could still get a solid 250 miles down without too much worry. You plug into the DC fast charge station, 47 minutes later, you're at 80%. That 80% will give you 189 miles because that will take you from 80% down to 10% where you're supposed to stop at your next DC fast charge session. The reality is that when you're DC fast charging a battery, you're only getting about a 70% fill. But if you were to drive this vehicle, like most people drive gasoline vehicles, where you drive it until the light goes on that says, hey, you need gas, you're driving 90% of the tank. And that means you can go much, much further on one fill up. One fill up of this logically will get you about 350, 360 miles. One fill up on this Mach-E will get you about 189. Of course, the reality is that this is really a gray area because it depends on how you plan on using your alternative fueled vehicle, whether you have the ability to charge at home or charge at the office. To be perfectly honest, if you charge at the office all the time or at home all the time, an electric vehicle may be easier because you never have to stop at a station ever again. You just plug it in at night, the vehicle is charged and ready to go. The range is definitely going to be a problem for people that just want to spontaneously do some random road trip, but I have done road trips in this Mach-E and had absolutely no problem. Now, during the pandemic, I have to admit that although I did San Francisco Bay Area to Los Angeles and even San Diego multiple times in this Mach-E and multiple times in the Nexo, if I was crunched on time, I always took my Nexo because I knew that I could fill up in five minutes and I'd get home and driving this would instantly add two hours to my round trip journey. And during the pandemic, I was doing round trips in one day. I'd drive down there, film a car, drive back. And with the Mach-E, that definitely was a little bit tricky. It's also worth noting that if you live in a townhome or a condo or an apartment or any kind of living situation where you don't have access to easy charging, that could be a problem for an EV like this, but it's going to be less of a problem for the Mirai as long as you live near a hydrogen station. And hydrogen stations are a little bit tricky. There are under 60 of them in California right now. I happen to have an office in San Jose that's almost right next to one of the hydrogen stations. But San Jose is the 10th largest city in the country, and it has currently one hydrogen station. Oddly enough, San Francisco is quite a bit smaller than San Jose. They've got three or four. Los Angeles has a ton. San Diego, which is way bigger than San Jose, has very few hydrogen stations. It's a very odd hydrogen island, I guess you'd say, or lack of hydrogen island in California. So filling this is a little bit tricky. And I think that's the ultimate problem with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, is it's a chicken and egg problem. And Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota, the three manufacturers of production hydrogen vehicles, have for some reason really resisted bringing their own filling stations to market. And that's something that Tesla realized they needed to do right away. So if you want to drive one of these, you're not filling at a Toyota station, you're filling at a Shell station, or an Air Liquide station, or a True Zero station. True Zero is the largest network. And there is some public funding and some private funding assisting True Zero in their network development, but Toyota's not running out and having Toyota branded hydrogen stations. And to be perfectly honest, in my opinion at least, that's exactly what Toyota needs to do. But regular manufacturers like Ford and Toyota and everybody else are often stuck in this, this world where they say, well, I build the car, why should I build the gas station? I don't build gas stations. Let, that, let Shell do that, let Exxon do that, etc. And to some extent, Ford's also doing that with this Mustang Mach-E, because the DC fast charging experience in this vehicle is not nearly as smooth as the DC fast charging experience in modern Teslas. You take this to an Electrify America station, sometimes it will charge completely, sometimes it won't. Sometimes the vehicle will get recognized by the station automatically, sometimes it won't. Um, sometimes it may take five or six minutes for it to somehow get recognized by the charging station, sometimes it will be immediate. And the situation is just smoother in the Tesla 
test the lineup. If you want to know how the Nexo stacks up against the Toyota Mirai, be sure and check out that video that's coming out soon. In a nutshell, the Nexo makes a lot more sense as a hydrogen vehicle because it's a crossover. And the sedan profile of the Mirai is probably my biggest complaint about the vehicle. It just ends up not quite as practical as I would like. And with that, I will end with just one more unvarnished thought. I really love the Mirai. I think it's a gorgeous looking vehicle. This is exactly what Toyota needed to do to make hydrogen vehicles look sexy. The next part, and the part that seems to be missing with the Mirai, is the performance component. The handling is great, the steering is excellent, it has a rear power bias obviously because it's rear wheel drive so it's a ton of fun to drive, but it's just not as quick as I would like. There's no technical reason that they couldn't have given this a slightly larger battery pack and say a 300 horsepower motor in the rear or a 400 horsepower motor in the rear and made it even more fun. One thing that Tesla has also proved the EV space, I guess you could say, is that for people to be truly interested in that alternative fueled vehicle, it doesn't just need to be green. It needs to be green, it needs to look decent, and it needs to give you a performance reason for some enthusiasts to start shopping. And I really believe that if the Mirai could get to that next level, that perhaps that could be the case. Or they need to focus on practicality. I would love to see Toyota complete some of their prototypes. They have a Tundra hydrogen prototype where they basically stuck a Mirai fuel cell under the hood of a Tundra, that seems like a really, really good idea. Because in a body on frame vehicle, not like this, there's a ton of room for hydrogen tanks. And you could much more easily create a 300 horsepower pickup truck with 400, 500, 600 miles of hydrogen range. That would be a really, really interesting option. Be sure and check out my separate videos on, of course, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, this all new Toyota Mirai, the Nexo, et cetera, all those competitive products coming up soon here at Alex Nottos. I'll see all of you later. Be sure and check out Instagram, Facebook, all of those social things, and uh, of course the merch store at awaymerch.com.